Oh, ooh, hmm. It's definitely, oh my God. Is this just gonna be like a whole trial of fails? <laughs> Today, I have a handful of new drugstore makeup to test out with y'all. Honestly, there have already been so many new makeup releases this year. It's been a little hard to keep up. So I'm excited to try out all of these new products and share what's actually worth picking up. We're gonna dive right in, but first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. First up, we have a product that I talked a little bit about in my Will I Buy It video, and I did. This is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. It is a clear, kind of tacky formula that's supposed to really extend the wear of your foundation. It's also supposed to be a high hydrating formula. It has hyaluronic acid and niacinamide in the formula, and this generally reminds me a lot of the Milk Makeup Gripping Primer, and I think the popularity of that is what inspired this. And like I mentioned in that video, I am noticing a lot of gripping primers hitting the drugstores recently. So I definitely think this is going to be kind of the big thing this year. I will admit I like the packaging, but the tube is a little small, no? It is not even a full fluid ounce. Hmm, how much did I pay for this? $10. Hmm, there is the consistency. It's a little jelly, a little runny. Oh, ooh, hmm. <laughs> Y'all know that I haven't really been a primer fan in a while, but I'm kind of starting to use them now as I have signs of aging in my skin. But one of the main reasons why I never really liked wearing primer versus just prepping my skin well with moisturizers is that I didn't like the feeling of layering so many products on my face. And this feels kind of thick. It's probably like the tackiness, but like as you spread it, it just, I don't know, it feels like I'm spreading glue. <laughs> but I'm sure that's part of how it's gonna make my makeup last. Yeah, it's definitely tacky. It's starting to set on the skin and like I can just feel it. I feel the tackiness as I move the skin on my face, like in expressions. <laughs> Well, it'll be interesting to see uh, how this does. <laughs> Moving on to foundation, I actually have a new drugstore makeup product to mix in to my foundation. This is the brand new Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. Now this is a part of a collaboration that I feel had so much potential. <laughs> so Flower Beauty, which is owned by Drew Barrymore, recently collabed with Charlie's Angels, which obviously Drew Barrymore starred in. When I heard this was happening, I was so stoked. I used to love this movie and I loved Drew's character who was named Dylan in the movie. And this is just like a dream collaboration. Um, then I opened this palette, which I'm not gonna be using this video and I'll let you know why. It's just a neutral palette. It's just a neutral palette in Charlie's Angels packaging. And I kind of posted a TikTok about this general problem that I think a lot of makeup brands fall into. And it wasn't even specifically referring to this, but I'm seeing so many collabs that could be so good. And they just kind of put themed packaging on a neutral palette and call it a day. On the back, like it says, these shades were kind of meant for you to recreate Dylan, the character's look. Like I really wish they would have at least put in like three or four Charlie's Angels branding shades. So like an orange or red or really hot pink. I have all these shades in 10 other palettes. So that's why I'm not gonna be using this palette today. I might dip into it in the future, but like this color story just doesn't excite me as much as the idea of the collab excited me, but I still do want to test out the mix-in. So I'm going to be mixing it in with my Catrice True Skin Foundation, and I don't want to add too much. Usually about two pumps of this Catrice Foundation does it for me, although I'm running out. <laughs> now, they said that this could also be used on its own if you just want a glow. I'm gonna, oh, that's a huge drop. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick with that one glob of a drop and mix that in and see what we get. Ooh, ooh, okay. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna be able to pick this up and I am gonna have to add a little bit more. It's adding a little bit of just a bronzy radiance, but it's not really 
obvious or out there, which I'm very happy about. I was a little worried that this was going to glitter bomb my foundation, which, oh my God, I am tragically low on. <laughs> come on, come on. Just give me enough to finish this look. <laughs> I think I can stand to do actually like two more drops. These drops are kind of big though. It's a weird texture, not gonna lie. It doesn't quite seem to be affecting my shade too much, which I'm also happy about because we don't want like a totally bronzy tan face and then compared to my neck, it's crazy looking. Ooh, I really like this, especially for winter. Just adding a little bit of warmth, a little bit of glow. Now, just kind of going back to that primer, my foundation is applying really nicely over it. Although this foundation just rocks on its own too. Like everything's feeling pretty good and it's actually looking incredible in my expression lines. I feel like I'm getting a really pretty built-in highlight from it just on the tops of my cheekbones. So this is something that I could see myself using if I'm not gonna do a full face of makeup, but I do want that dimension in the face. I want a little bit of that glow in the highlight. Okay, wait, I just have to show you, hold on. I really think this primer is doing the most on my nose. Let me zoom you in so you can see this a little bit clearer. Okay, usually I really have to work at my nose to like get all of my pores smoothly covered. Applying this foundation over the primer on my nose, what pores? Zero, nada. My skin looks so smooth. And earlier this week, mind you, I had like dry patches all up on here and my foundation was applying so weird and patchy and it's looking really good. Okay, so I might not mind the texture if my makeup stays looking like this all day. Wow, even like over this honking zit that I have, <laughs> I know that it's dried out because I put a treatment on it last night, wow. All right. We have a new eyeshadow palette from Milani that I'm so excited to dip into. This is the Milani Gilded Flora eyeshadow palette. So they did just release their whole Flora makeup line, which included the Color Fetish Matte Flora lipsticks, which I reviewed a few videos back. And this is the corresponding eyeshadow palette. So I'm loving this color story for spring. We do have a good mix of neutrals in here to make this very wearable, but we have these pops of purple and pink with metallic roses and metallic violets, as well as some yellows and golds. So I'm just gonna prep my eyes with the Milani eyeshadow primer. What better way to set us up for success? I think they also did a really great job balancing shimmers and metallics with mattes. I'm loving how many matte options I'm seeing here. So I think I'm gonna start by using Garden Path, which is somewhat of a light beige. And I'm just gonna use that to set my primer now. Hmm. <laughs> These mattes are quite powdery. A lot of kick up in the pan, but that also signifies a really soft and buttery formula. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind kick up as long as there's a reason. <laughs> this is like the perfect base shade for me. I'm going to go into Orchid which is this matte purple. And I'm gonna work that into my crease, sort of winging that outward. We've got a good amount of pigment to start. Looks kind of buildable. Just gonna dip into Botanist, which looks like this beautiful metallic champagne and put that on my brow bone. Okay, so it's going on a little bit more glittery than metallic, but I'm assuming if I were to wet my brush, which I will do for the lid, it would apply a little more opaque, but even this is a beautiful effect. Now I do think I'm gonna go for like an old school cut crease with this look just to get the effect that I want. So I'm gonna take some concealer and carve out underneath that pink shade. Now full disclosure, I am using Tarte Shape Tape for this just because I don't have any other matte concealers on hand, but the alternative to this at the drugstore would be the e.l.f. camo concealer, the original one, not the hydrating one. Mine just went bad and I do not want to put that on my eyes. <laughs> all right, next I want to dip in to basically all of these gorgeous metallic colors. First, I'm gonna dip into Bouquet, which looks like this rose gold, yellow gold duochrome. I'm wetting my brush first. Hopefully it gives me the effect I want. Ooh, hmm. I don't know about the wet application. I might might have to try with my finger. I'm just not sure if I can get in that <laughs> corner with my nails. Okay, I just wanna swatch this with my finger so you can see the actual intensity. Ugh, 
So pretty. Okay, how can I do this with my finger on my lid? I think I got a little bit more color on there. I just wanna be careful to not like ruin the cut crease. Now moving on to the middle portion of my lid, I'm gonna go in to In Full Bloom. Mm, I kinda wish there was a little more like metallic glow to this shade, like a little bit more of a foil effect. If that makes sense, that's what I was expecting from just looking at it in the palette. Now I am getting a ton of fallout. I'm not sure if you can see on the tops of my cheeks here. I have so much pink glitter. <laughs> e -e -e. Lastly, I have to dip into this Forget Me Not. This looks like a lavender slash pink duochrome. Mm. Yeah, you know what? These ones don't really uh, react to wet brushes as much as I thought that they would. It's definitely, oh my God. That is the most beautiful color I've ever seen in my life. Love, love, love it. Okay, wait, now I need to figure out how am I gonna wing this out? So it's just kind of hitting me now that these shades, these metallics that literally I fell in love with at first sight, they swatch beautifully if you're just gonna put them like on the back of your hand. I mean, that is drop dead gorgeous. In practice, they're a little hard to use. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, obviously the finger application is going to be your best bet, but both with a dry and a wet brush, I'm not really getting the results that I was looking for. And sometimes you just can't use your fingers if you need precise application like this look would call for. Plus the fallout is sort of getting to me because now I have like this pink and purple holographic glitter highlight that I wasn't planning on wearing today. I was really hoping for this purple to make more of an impact than it is. I just can't figure out how to do it with a brush. Mm, like I really didn't wanna give this a bad review, but this is already way more time than I planned on <laughs> using on my eyes today. And it's not exactly what I wanted in the first place. Hopefully we can turn the vibe around with the latest liquid liner at the drugstore. Say that five times fast. <laughs> this is the new CoverGirl Exhibitionist Lash Enhancing Liquid Liner. Now when I first saw this, I thought that this was gonna be like a lash serum liquid liner combo. And I guess it kind of is, but more of like a nourishing lash serum versus like one that makes your lashes grow. It definitely does not make that claim. So it says it's infused with provitamin B5 and aloe vera. It is supposed to enhance the appearance of lashes while providing instant definition. It's also supposed to have a flat matte finish, which is my preferred look for liquid liner. And it's also claiming to not feather, flake, fade, or smudge. Big claims there. Now, CoverGirl went fully cruelty-free several years ago, but since then, they've been making a lot of vegan products as well, and this is one of them. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I really love that the brand is committing to moving forward in that direction. Like, they're walking the walk and not just talking the talk. Now, just opening this up, we have a felt tip. For some reason, when I bought this, I thought it had a brush tip. I hate felt tips, <laughs> okay. If the liner is good enough, I, I do like that it is a longer felt tip and it does come to a very, very sharp point. So maybe there is still some precision to be had. Ooh, okay, it is really gliding on. Not bad. I'm really using like the tippy tippy top to see how thin and sharp of a line we can create with it. And so far so good. Wow. It is a little bit more flexible than I prefer because I feel like it's just gonna like snap back on me, but that is a really sharp wing. I don't think I've ever been able to get that thin and sharp of a point with a felt tip liner before. So first impression's not bad. I'll eat my words because this felt tip is doing the work. Now let's just see if it stays gliding on smoothly because felt tips are notorious for drying out pretty quickly and sometimes even on the first go. Mm, this side did not come out as great. Ah, let me see if I can fix it. Is it me or is it the liner? <laughs> Yeah, I'm already getting less uh, product flow into the very tip of the felt tip. I don't know if you're able to see this, but you can just sort of see where it started to dry out mid application and skip. And I was just not able to get that really sharp, precise point on this side because just after doing this, which came out beautifully, it already started to dull the felt tip. Yep. Dang. 
it's just felt tips suck. I don't know why people still use them. You can see the felt tips start to bend at the very, very top. And once that starts happening, you lose the ability to get really, really sharp points like that. They turn kind of blurry and smudgy. Is this just gonna be like a whole trial of fails? <laughs> No, I have hope. <laughs> All right, just prepping my lashes. I'm gonna throw some falsies on because I always feel better in falsies. <laughs> I'm gonna breeze through my contour blush and highlight. I'm using the Essence Matte Bronzing Powder Palette. I'm trying this new thing where I don't bring my contour like all the way towards the center of my face. For blush, I've been obsessed with this shade recently from the Milani Baked Blushes. It's called Rose de Oro. And it's basically like a warm pink with a little bit of golden shimmer to it. Although I'm also gonna have all that purple shimmer from <laughs> the eyeshadow. For my highlight, I'm using the AOA Glow Baby in Morning Glow Liquid Highlighter. And again, with my highlight, I'm also trying to focus more on really the higher points versus bringing it all the way in toward the apple of the cheek and a little bit on the nose. Finishing off the look, we're gonna try a new lip stain. This is the ColourPop Fresh Kiss Glossy Lip Stain. So this is supposed to give you the finish of like a juicy gloss, but the color performance of a stain. So I got two shades, Twice Shy and Roll Out. Let's see what's gonna match this look, cause I definitely didn't think about that when I <laughs> did my eyes. Roll Out is more of a bright sort of coral, really pretty for spring and summer. And then Twice Shy, is more neutral. Why don't we swatch them on the back of the hand and hopefully these are still in stock and not discontinued by the time this video goes live. Okay, whoa, that's actually really bright. I mean, I know on the lips it'll be more translucent, but it's still more color payoff than I was expecting. So that's twice shy. Yeah, that's sort of like, hmm. I don't know how to explain that shade. It's like a creamy, warm, peachy orange. What would you describe that shade as? <laughs> Let's see how it actually looks on the lips though. Because with lip stains, you do get sort of your natural lip color coming through too. Ooh, that does not match. Ooh. Why does it look so much more orange on my lips? I think I might wanna go with the other one. Bah! I did not think that through. Oh, <gasps> it already left a stain. Oh, wow, okay. Oh my God, it's so bright, but at least this is like in the same color family as the <laughs> eyeshadow. This feels really nice. I'm not necessarily seeing like a lot of glossiness to this. I'm definitely getting traditional lip stain vibes. This is a little stronger than I expected, which is definitely not a bad thing because a strong lip stain would definitely come in handy and would be a welcome addition to my collection. I mean, there is like a wet appearance to it. I don't necessarily think it looks super glossy. I do wanna give them credit though, this applied very evenly. Sometimes with lip stains, it's hard not to get a streaky appearance. And obviously if you want your lips evenly stained, you want them evenly covered in the product. So this did go on very smoothly, evenly. I feel like there's no streakiness or patchiness at all. I mean, I will say that these ended up being a lot more pigmented than I expected for sure. So that's very cool. I would almost say this is more of a liquid lipstick slash stain combo versus a gloss stain combo though. Well, here's the finished look using all new drugstore makeup. Now, I really like where we ended up. It just took a lot of effort and an emotional roller coaster to get here. But I am curious to see how this makeup performs throughout the day. So I will update you in a little bit and let you know how everything's holding up. Bye. It's been eight hours since I put this makeup on and as much of a crazy journey the application process was, a lot of it ended up really surprising me. So let me just zoom you in. I'm gonna go in the order that I applied these products in, starting with the primer. I'm obsessed. <laughs> this primer seriously impressed me. I did not expect it to perform this well. I'm just blown away because it looks like I just did my foundation and it's been eight hours. I'm not seeing any breakdown. I feel like I've retained nearly all of the coverage that this foundation gave me at the beginning of the day. And this foundation is a great foundation, but 
I feel like there is, you know, a noticeable amount of wear throughout the day and this just looks fresh still. <laughs> Especially around my nose. That is an area that I can usually count on my foundation breaking up, like around here on either side of my nostril. Usually I see separation there, not today. On most days I could also bet on there being some breakdown right at the center of my nostrils. Not today. My pores are still blurred on my nose and my cheeks, but what I am the most happy about with this primer is how it kept my foundation out of my expression lines. I mean, the most that I'm seeing right now is this tiny, tiny subtle crease with my Deep 11. But if you watch me regularly, you know that Typically I get these expression lines up here and that is where a lot of makeup tends to settle. Not today. <laughs> and even in my laugh lines, I'm not seeing a lot of creasing or settling. I am just floored. I do just wish that it was a little bit more lightweight. I feel like I would get more use out of it that way. Right now it is for sure going to be reserved for these like full on full face glam makeup days. So if you have a hard time getting your foundation to stay in place, stay out of fine lines, go and run and buy this primer. <laughs> All right, moving on, I did wanna correct something that I said earlier. I really thought that this Flower Beauty Heat Wave uh, bronzing essence was new because of the way that they sent it to me as part of the limited edition Charlie's Angels collection, which is also how they have it on their website. But this is not a new product. This is just a core product that they're including as part of the Charlie's Angels collection, which is limited edition and new. I'm kind of confused by it, but anyway, this isn't new. It's been around for a couple years, but it's new to me. But I'm still seeing a beautiful radiant glow that does not look shiny. So that makes me happy. Also, like I mentioned, it doesn't look glittery. There's no shimmer coming through. So that really just mixed into my foundation seamlessly and it did not affect the performance of my foundation. So very happy about that. Moving on to the eyeshadow. I know I was in a sort of love-hate relationship with this look because I really <laughs> do like how it came out. I think it's really pretty. I would totally wear this look again. It's just not what I wanted and it wasn't the intensity that I was expecting. So I still have pretty mixed feelings about that eyeshadow palette. I mean, the shadow itself performed really well on top of the Milani eyeshadow primer, no creasing at all. And I don't feel like the shades got any more subtle. <laughs> As far as the liner, it did live up to the claims that there was no flaking or anything throughout the day. Let me just go ahead and go in and see if it budges here. Mm, there's a little bit rubbing off, but no smearing. I just was not happy with the fact that that felt tip was so felt tippy. <laughs> but the formula itself isn't bad. I just wish they'd put a brush tip on it. If you don't mind felt tips and that might be something you're more comfortable using, then you might actually really love this liner because the formula held up for sure and continues to hold up as I just sit here rubbing my eye. <laughs> and finally, we have the ColourPop Glossy Lip Stain. Now, full disclosure, I did end up reapplying this after lunch because I wanted to take more pictures in this look, but I did manage to get a clip of what it looked like after I ate. And I didn't eat anything crazy oily. It was just a chicken salad sandwich. What was weird was the bottom lip looked okay, but the top lip really lost a lot of color. And the stain wasn't very, even all over my top lip, even though I applied it evenly. You could see like at the bottom of my cupid's bow, there was this really dark spot, but then toward the inner lip, you could just see there was a lot of color missing. So that was about three hours ago. And after reapplying, I didn't drink or eat anything else. And I'm kind of seeing the same thing happen where the bottom lip looks great and hasn't faded or anything, but the top lip, it's just kind of worn. I mean, there's obviously still a lot of color here, but for not eating anything after reapplying, I don't know why there would be so much fading in this inner part. Now, since we're at the end of the day, I want to try removing the lip stain to see how much color is actually being left behind because both of the swatches that I did earlier today, I mean, they're still here, so. Wow, <laughs> it still looks like I've got lip product on, okay. Yeah, 
I don't know why the top lip just didn't really take as evenly. But overall, it does what it says it's gonna do, and I was very impressed with the pigmentation of the lip stain and sort of the texture of it. It is a good hybrid product for sure. Are any of the products that I tried today going on your shopping list? And as always, let me know if there are other new drugstore makeup releases you want me to try. Just leave them in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Catherine. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I test out the new e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. Does it live up to its claims? I'll see you over there. Bye.